Gables are burning. Hanlef shouted, the king, young in war. Neither is, is it drawn from the east, nor does a dragon fly here, nor are the gables of this hall burning. Rather, murderous men are bringing forth their splendid arm armaments. The birds are singing, the grey-coated wolf is baying, the war rod resounds. Shield respond to shaft. Now this moon shines, waver beneath the clouds. Now deeds of woe ar arise, which will carry out this hatred within the people. But now waken, my warriors. Don your mail coats, take thought of courage, strive in the battle line, be valiant. Then arose from his bed many a great-hearted, gold-bedecked thane, warrior, girded on his sword. Then to the doors went the noble warriors, Sigfirth and Ea, drew their swords, and at the doors Ordlaf and Guthlaf, and Hengis himself, followed in their path. Still good ear advised Ga Ga Garoth, that for the first time so dear a life as his should not bear armour to the hall's door. Now a, a harsh act of violence would take it away. But he asked openly in front of all the brave-hearted hero who held the door. Sigfirth is my name, he said. I am Lord of the Sig Sigan. I am a widely known adventurer. Many woes have I undergone. Hard battles. It is now fixed for you. Whatever fate you wish is to seek from me. Then... There was a roar of slaughter in the hall. Rich shields and the hands of brave men had to break apart the body's defence. The stronghold's floor resounded until Garolf fell in the fighting. First of all among the land dwellers, good love son, and many good men around him. The corpses of the swift ones, the raven hovered, drab and dark brown. The light, light swords rose up as if all Finsburg were afire. I have never heard in men's warring that more worthy st did sixty vi victorious fighters bear themselves better, nor ever did henchmen better repay their shiny meed and hard companions than when this his body, body his bodyguard repaid Hanif. They fought for five days so that none of them fell, the no the noble comrades, but they held the doors. Then a wounded warrior went away said that his mail coat was broken, his steadfast war coat, and his helm was split. Then the army's leader straight away asked him how the warriors were bearing their wounds, of which of the youths. And sadly, this line is almost entirely missing from the context. From the, co from the context, it's clear that the speaker has seen the glint of light outside the hall and suggested three possible explanations for this. Dawn breaking fire or the hall's roof roof of the fire these possibilities are rejected in turn by Hanef who correctly foresees the glint of the foreman's weapons that was the fight at Finsburg but what does it tell us about Hengis in the wider context of of, of his character and Europe, and Europe well Hengis was said to have had the mind of a Roman general and the heart of a heroic Nordic warrior. He was had this habit of taking becoming a private contractor for Finn this time, the king of the Frisians, and then as assass taking away the surrounding people around that person and as in a game of chess. And then removing those people and then fighting. But obviously He's been attacked himself, for and for this reason, Hengis is a hero rather than an evil doer. He was attacked by Finn's by Finn's men in the hall, and the other people like Hanef, who Hengis may have been working for. Hanef seems to be the leader of Hengis's group of people, so Hengis may have been a young man when the fight at Finsburg happened. And the Hengist that would later on take uh, the English people to Britain to fight against Vortigern um, is not yet become about. 
He gained a reputation from Finsberg, and that's probably why he was hired as a private contractor by Vortigern, uh, the Welsh king. And he fought bravely against the Picts and Scots there. And then when Vortigern turned on him, raped his daughter and burned the settlement at Crayford, Hengist then turned on Vortigern. So twice he's been betrayed, and twice he took revenge. So it is in his character to take revenge on the people who've harmed his, him and his family and his comrades. Um, but what about the wider European context of Hengist as a person? Well, the English were involved in an alliance with the Franks, Saxons, Frisians, until the incident at Finsburg, when they took over the Frisian lands. Um, and to this day, Frin, Frin, Frisian is very close to English. Um, the uh, the Almanic alliance was the chief enemy of the Roman Empire until the Huns came along, and then the Almanic alliance, which involved the English, the Franks, the Saxons, and the West Goths, um, and the the Bavarians and Burgundians switched sides and went with the Roman Empire to pro to protect the Western world against the Hunnic menace. Who in the Huns were a mixture of Mongolian, Turkic, and Germanic people from the east. Originally, they all came from northwest China. So you can see the European context of Hengist as a person because he wasn't he was part of the Roman world. The English were part of the Roman world. Um, but you're seeing that the Roman world and the Nordic world and the Celtic world are becoming mixed at this time to form a common European identity. And later, when Christianity converted them, a common identity from Christianity, which, um, of course, Hengist at this time would have believed in Woden, and Thor and the other Nordic gods, um, um, who, whatever your opinion on God is, um, you can see that there was a code of ethics and a code of honour that the Nordic um, religion believed in, which they carried over into the Christian um, mythology and ch changed Christianity from being a Jewish religion to a European religion. Uh, you can see this by the by the fact that the Irish monks who wrote down these stories of the Nordic, who were themselves Celtic, wrote down the stories of the Nordic sagas, and later on the Icelandic people who wrote down the Nordic sagas were trying to make a literary, um, a literary record of all the heroic. Legends, and if you want to know more about the heroic English Nordic legends, then you should read a book by Catherine Herbert called it The English Legends, Heroic English Legends. And Finsberg of, is one of those legends which was a history, a family history of Hengist and Horsa, uh, although Horsa is not mentioned in the poem. Right, my next video will be on in this series will be on shifting forward several centuries will be on the Danish wars and the um, relationship between uh, the English and the Danes the English under uh, Ethelred the Unready as the name suggests he was not a successful king and Canute the Great who was the king of the Danes and who eventually would conquer England and Britain. Thank you for listening. I think it's good to return to the beginning so that you can know the, the beginning of the end. Thank you.